When you dream at night, do you dream about the old country or the new? The only thing I can tell you is that I dream in Yiddish. But are the And I would say that a writer should write in the language in which he dreams. But are <laughs> After he read me the story and I laughed in all the right places, he said to me, do you want to be my translator? And it was like a, a marriage proposal. And he would hold the Yiddish manuscript on his lap and, re and, re and translate the story to the, to the English-speaking person. And they would kind of turn his English into English, you know, where his the sentence structure could be Germanic because Yiddish has the Germanic sentence structures or, or idioms had to be shortened. I was arguing a lot that he should keep them as it was, like, don't spit in my kasha, you know, but um, I, because I thought keeping the idioms made it rich. There is a line in the play where the character Yentl says to the character Hadas, I love you. And Singer said, oh no, she wouldn't say that. And we said, what would she say? And he replied, Yentl would say, I want you. Whoa. My brother took me to a sculptor's atelier, and I see all these naked women, these breasts and bellies. I did not feel that I was betraying God. I felt that I like to know more about them, to read about them, and to write about them. When we started working together, he started to say really outrageous things to me. I remember the very first things that he said to me. He looked at me and he said, I can just imagine you with your wet legs spread wide right in front of me. And, and, I, and I was a little bit shocked, and I, and I sort of just went on, you know, went on with our, you know, assignment. And, but he would keep peppering. He would stop in the middle of the stories because he was so, you know, bored with, with what we were doing. And so I started to tell him, like, little porno stories. Isaac Singer walks into an elevator. There's a redhead, and he fucks her in the elevator. And, 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 and I would, you know, would, okay, Isaac, now you tell me. And he would say, that's not a story. Who is the woman? Who, why do I like her? Why am I in the elevator? That's how I really learned how to tell stories. And I never considered myself a writer. And I fell into it. Together. He and his women translator, they produce an excellent work in American. Here you have a writer who creates two works, two bodies of works at the same time, one in Yiddish, one in English, but they are not the same and they are not aiming to be read by the same audiences. Isn't it fascinating? I think it's quite unique in the history of literature. When I got the Nobel Prize, many of my Yiddishists again attacked me. First of all, they said, you have destroyed Yiddish, because we have gotten a name of the greatest Schlemiels in the whole world. <laughs> and now suddenly, you made a success of Yiddish. What have you done to us? He may even stop dying. <laughs> and what will happen then? 